Hello, hello. All right, we are going to have a great conversation about, yeah, Heather, but my thoughts never change. They're always fixated on food or how much caffeine I'm drinking or how, when I'm going to have my snacks and treats. Like, it's always just about these food issues and behaviors, and that's all I ever think about. And this was an actual uh, conversation I just had with one of my coaching clients. She was saying, you know, every day these thoughts just keep coming up and they keep hanging around and I feel like I don't ever get a reprieve from it. And that's just kind of not true. It seems that way because those are the messages you notice the most. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you hear this loud buzzing sound and you turn and you really want to stop the loud buzzing sound, but all these like light chimes are going on over here and you're not listening to them because this big loud buzzer is going off over here, right? That's kind of how we tend to focus on our thoughts. We have some that draw us in. They're very sensitive to us. They, they have a lot of meaning behind it. They feel very repetitive. They, they're very loud and booming. And then we have all these other thoughts that happen all day every day that have nothing to do with those thoughts. Here's an example. You're sitting at your desk, you're thinking about chocolate, you're thinking about having a treat, you're thinking about food, and then all of a sudden, the fire alarm goes off at work and everybody has to get up and do an evacuation. In that moment when the fire alarm goes off, you've dropped the thought about the chocolate, about the food. You can't help it. It's just your brain changes direction. It now hears something else that's new. It sees something that's going on and it starts to say, what's going on? Is this a drill? Is this a real fire? You know, or what, what should I do? It starts to focus on something else. Now you don't fixate on that. You don't sit there and go, oh my gosh, I had a lot of thoughts today about a fire drill. <laughs> like you let it come in, you let it go out, you pay no attention to it. Once it's over, it's over. You're sitting down contemplating whether or not to binge. All of a sudden your door, somebody knocks at your door. You, you have the thought, who is that? Is, who's bringing me a package? What is this all about? So you get up, you go to the door, you check. That whole time you're no longer thinking about binging. Right now you're actually focused on finding out who's at the door, what this is all about. If you've got to do something, you know, you're, you're in that mode. now. At the end of the day, could you tell me you were thinking about that? Probably not, because it's not an important thought to you. It's not, it's not the big booming stuff that you're looking for every day. It's all the other thoughts that happen. Your coworker comes into your cubicle to ask for help with a project. It interrupts your train of thought. Heck, you do it to yourself. You're sitting there thinking about food, and all of a sudden, maybe you realize you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, got to get up and go to the bathroom. That thought was not about food. And the reason I'm showing you this is because when we believe the story, all I ever think about is da, 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 da. We send our brain on a mission, and I did another video on this. Be careful what mission you send your brain on. You send your brain on a mission to find evidence to validate what you believe to be true. And so this is why what we say matters. This is why what we focus on matters. There's a story I love. Um, I'm just gonna really truncate it down, but there, there's this old man and his, his grandson, and, he's, and the old man is explaining to the child how in each of us, we have a good wolf and a bad wolf, and they're constantly at each other. They're constantly fighting. And the little boy goes to the grandfather, well, which one of them wins? And he says, the one you feed, aka the one you pay attention to. And what's interesting is, is we have very heightened awareness to certain thoughts, certain beliefs, certain repetitive attention getting thoughts, right? But through the day, you've got tons of thoughts that are happening that have nothing to do with those things, but you're not sitting there really diligently paying attention to them. You're letting them come in, you're letting them go out. You know, you might even look up at the fan and go, wow, that's a really ugly ceiling. Like you have all these thoughts that happen through the day and the month and the week that have nothing to do with your problem areas, okay? It's the one you pay attention to. If you had the, the great idea one day, you go, I hate my job. I hate my boss. I want to kill my boss. There's a thought. <laughs> now, here's the difference. Do you have the thought, I want to kill my boss? And actually just you know, laugh it off and let it go, realizing it's ridiculous, just like other ridiculous thoughts that show up? Or do you sit down with a pen and paper 
and start writing out your master plan to kill your boss. See, this is the difference between letting a thought pass through you, dismissing it, letting it go, versus I'm going to fixate on that thought. I'm going to really give it a lot of my attention. I'm going to feed it and, and, and really hold on to it. But if you could let the thought slide through, like you do the doorbell, like once the doorbell rang, you went to it, you dealt with it, you're not sitting there like going, oh my gosh, is that going to keep happening? Like every five minutes, is the doorbell going to ring? Is there going to be somebody I have to deal with at the door? Like you don't typically do that, right? You dealt with it, you moved on, you let it pass through you. You had the crazy thought about your boss. You probably didn't create a master plan. You probably laughed it off <laughs> and you moved on. Why can we not start to entertain that approach about food, eating, everything else? We can't. We just have to be aware they're all just thoughts and they do not mean we have to take action. But as long as we are only obsessively focusing on one kind of thought, we're staring it down, we're giving it lots of attention, we're really answering the questions in our head. Yeah, do I have enough calories to have that? Da, 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 da. By the way, that's one of the reasons why I love having a plan for the 24 hours. The less you have to think about food during the day because it's already written down, the less conversation in your head you have to have about it, the less negotiating, the less decision making. So I just wanted to kind of share this idea with you because often people truly believe this is all I think about. Mm, no, no, you, you don't. You have way too many thoughts racing through your head every day for this to be your only thing. But it's the thing that you definitely notice, big booming siren versus beautiful chimes, right? You definitely hear it more and you definitely stay with it way longer than necessary because it is a sensitive topic for you. It's an it's a area that you have deemed as being an issue and so whenever it shows up, you really notice it. I hope this message helps. I would love for you to join me in the podcast premium. Get access to every one of our podcast episodes, including my coaching series with Carolina and Sarah. And to do that, just go to halfsizeme.com forward slash fan. You have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon.